So the dipalidium caninum, this parasite is also known as double pore tapeworm. This parasite is one of the commonest parasites in dogs of the most part of the world. The final host for this parasite is dog, cat, fox, and occasionally human, particularly the children. This parasite is found in the small intestine of these hosts. And the intermediate host for this parasite is flea and the louse. Maybe you don't know what is flea. So, flea is a very tiny external parasite of few millimeters in size. Morphologically, their body is divided into head, thorax, and abdomen. This tiny ectoparasite bears three pairs of legs uh, on the body and third pairs of the legs are longer than first and second pairs, which enables them to jump. And these parasite can frequently change their host. Therefore, they are also known as temporary ectoparasite. Does that, that doesn't have wings on their body and the body is laterally flattened. As a result, they can move through the body coat of the animal very easily. And the louse is another permanently ectoparasite. That is, they don't leave the host in their entire life cycle. Hope you are familiar with this tiny ectoparasite. So in your third year first semester, when you when you will study veterinary entomology, you will come to know a lot on these ectoparasites. So the flea that acts as the intermediate host for this parasite uh, are Tenocephalus canis, this is also known as dog flea, and the Tenocephalus felis, this is also known as cat flea. Pulex irritans, this is also known as human flea, but it can also be found in dog, cat, swine, and different other animals. And some of the lice uh, also incriminated, sorry, incriminated to be involved in the life cycle of these parasites are Trichodactus canis, or it could be Heterodoxa spinizer, or Linognathus cetosus. Okay, the morphological features of dipalidium. Can you remember the size of Tania solium or Tania sazinata? Those parasites are very big ones. They could be 3 to 4 meters or 10 meters. Even the Tania sazinata, you can remember, they can reach even up to 25 meters. But this parasite is not that big. This parasite, the adult type worm, that is a dipalidium caninum, could be up to 50 centimeter long. And there is four suckers in their body. There is a rostellum here. Rostellum is retractable and bears three to four rows of small hooks. Therefore, this is also known as an arm cystode. What about their proglotid? So proglotid, particularly the mature and the gravid one, is elongated and oval shaped like a rice grain or cucumber or pumpkin seed. If you look at this picture or even this picture, you can see one set of genital organ is here and another set of genital organ is located here. So two sets of genital organ in each of the proglotid. As there is two set of genital organ in each of the proglotid, there should be two genital openings. So one genital opening here and another genital opening here. They opens marginally, that is uh, along the side of the proglotid. And you can see this is an ovary and just beneath the ovary, there is another structure which is known as vitaline gland. So due to their, uh, this sort of appearance, appearance um, like um, they could be seen as a bunch of grapes sitting both sides of the proglotid. And you can see this tiny dots 
they are also known as testes and they can occupy the entire proglottid. So this is the summary slide of morphological features of dipylidium. So I have already mentioned that that adult parasite could be up to 50 centimeter long and there are four suckers in their body rostellum is retractable and on the rostellum there is three to four rows of small hooks therefore they are also known as arms stored so you can make a list what are the parasites that have hooks on their rostellum because this is very important for your bivalvosi and the proglottid the mature sorry so the mature and the gravid one is elongated and it um, it look like a rice grain or cucumber or pumpkin seed and there is there is two set of genital organ one set is here and another set is here two genital opening one is here and another genital opening one is here and you can see that this is an ovary and just beneath the ovary there is a vitelline gland and they are resembling like a bunch of grapes sitting on each side of this proglottid and testes that occupies the entire volume of the proglottid so these are the reference books that i have used um, during preparing this presentation and i have also used uh, some video and internet material images from internet and thank you all for watching this video.